So I'll throw all my doubt as you open my eyes to see the King of the Cross is now fully alive, and my shame did a Calvary. Oh, we cannot forget it's all about love, the love of the Father, Spirit, and Son. No, we can't. It's all about love, but we've been forgiven imperfect love. Awake, my soul, arise and shine. His glory lives in you. Oh, the story of my Jesus Christ forever makes us new. Interrupted by the presence of heaven, God of angel armies, you're the power inside me. You're the Prince of Peace in the mystery. God of angel armies, you're the power inside me. You're the voice of peace in anxiety. Yeah. 
the moment you're the still small voice getting louder like a lion how you roar with peace in the chaos of the moment you're the still small voice Getting louder like a lion, how you roar with peace. God, uh, angel armies, you're the power inside me. You're the prince of peace in a mystery. God, uh, angel armies, you're the power inside me. You're the voice of in anxiety, God, angel armies, you're the power inside me. You're the prince of peace in the mystery, God, angel armies, you're the power inside me. You're the voice of peace in anxiety. Joy instead of warning Teach my heart to follow you My God ever before me Speaking light upon my path Forever here around me Feel forever when you take me home and Jesus I will sing your praises declare them in the valley shout them on the mountain top and Jesus I will sing your praises forevermore shield and my defense and you've won the final victory and you place me in your hands cause I know you're the king who has called me by name from now till forever when you take me on and I know you're the king who has called Sing you. 
Raging all around me Through the thunder and the waves You're constant You're my lifeline in the storm I see the waters Rushing through this broken vessel You're the calm within the current Hope rising through the storm this mercy you had every right to leave me all my sin and left me stranded but your love has brought me home you never leave
Good morning, church. Hey, if you hear that at home, it's because we're live streaming and there's people in this building. We're really glad that you're turning in. I got Miss Casey at the back who's going to do a little pan of the sanctuary to show uh, people here. If you don't want your face on TV in their homes, you can look the other way. But the camera's over there. She's going to pan the sanctuary and uh, to show you that we've got live people in the building. It also shows a few extra chairs to know that there's room for you to book in and email or call and reserve. (laughs) So there you see, we're physically distanced. We've come in, we've sanitized our hands. We're wearing masks and uh, doing what we can to love God by obeying authorities, by uh, loving each other and loving ourselves and taking care of what needs to be taken care of. For those of you that are here in the sanctuary for the first time, you'll notice the arrows on the floor and, and our exit point is through the, the front door whenever, whenever uh, possible. And when you're going up and down stairs or to the washroom, just watch and give space to each other. So thank you for your grace and patience on this journey and for being a part of the Rock Church. We're really grateful. We've had a, a great summer with the sermon series, I Am. And trust, you've had a great summer, that you've had some rest, you've had some joy, and you are excited to be back together in community and to share the journey from whatever part of the city that you're in. Uh, Thank you for your gifts. This being the first Sunday of the month, I want to say thank you again for God's provision through you. And uh, when you participate in the finances of the Rock Church, you're helping the work carry on and carry forward. So thank you for being a part of that and encourage you to go online or through the the mail or call or if you're here in the building to uh, uh, give in the offering box at the back. I want to read an opening scripture with you from John chapter 1. We uh, are coming... I was going to say wrapping up the I Am series as Pastor Dwayne uh, brings to culmination the series, but really the, this series is just actually about launching us into what's next as it's been such good and rich stuff as we get a little clearer picture and understanding of who Jesus is and who he wants to be in our life. So John chapter 1. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God and the Word was God. And this Word is Jesus. Verse 2, he existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. The word gave, gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful that your light can never be extinguished by darkness but that you are pushing back darkness. You're bringing hope to life, to our lives, to those around us. And we thank you, God, that we can gather today to worship you. And so as we head into the fall season of 2020, there's just churches all over this city, this province, country, and indeed the world, re-engaging what uh, gathering and community looks like. God, you are pushing us ahead to ensure that we aren't getting confused by from a gathering to what church really is. And that you are are pushing us to grow in our connections with each other, not just within a service time, but outside and how to love well. And so, God, we uh, thank you that you're pursuing us and you're discipling us. And so even through what we need to do in regards to distance and masks, what we need to do in regards to sizes, God, you are challenging us to operate in love, that we would not go the way of, uh, of the uh, enemy that would want to embitter us, but God, that you want us to step in to what you have for us. And so God, I pray for every one of this congregation that you would bless them, that you'd minister to their hearts today, that they would sense your joy wherever they are sitting, at home or here in the Rock Church. So Jesus, we pray that you'd anoint the the worship, Pastor Dwayne as he speaks, and that we would receive what you have planned for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hannah, Leah, and Sarah are going to lead us And then Pastor DeWayne is coming to speak. God bless.
morning. It's so wonderful to worship with real people in the room. Glad you're here. Will you stand? Because today we're going to worship together and it's going to be amazing. can put your hands together. Trust the promise that you will carry me safe to shore.
You may be seated. Will you join us as we watch this uh, incredible depiction of Mary of Bethany from John 12? My sister Martha asked me, now Mary, what exactly was the purpose of that little scene you caused right there in the middle of dinner? 
And all I could say was, it was just something I could do. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me back up. Meeting Jesus. I guess I just never thought he might be so personable. One who would come to our home and have dinner with our family, laugh at our jokes, <laughs> tell a few of his own. Sitting with him made everything else seem less important. So that night, right before Passover, we wanted to honor him for everything he'd done in our family. Looking back on that night, we knew, knowing that the whole world was against him, there could have been so much more. We could have let him know that we were unified, that we were all for him. And that was a missed opportunity. Where was I? Uh. So that night, um, we had him over for dinner to honor him. But how exactly? How exactly do you thank someone for bringing your brother back to life? <laughs> well, our sister Martha was in the kitchen preparing this perfect meal for him. And then there was me. What could I do? I decided to give up one of my most precious possessions. The precious things given to Jesus never really seem wasted. And I knew as soon as I did it, it was obvious. Some people weren't pleased with my choice. It wasn't planned. It was spur of the moment. It just, it leapt from my heart. I let down my hair in public, which you just don't do. And I wiped his feet with it. And then I poured out an expensive perfume jar of oil to honor him. And the beautiful scent filled the whole room. Now, if I would have stayed paralyzed in fear over what my sister would think after she made this huge meal, or the anger of the onlookers, or what a disciple could say, I might never have worshipped him that way. And the beautiful scent, oh, it stayed for days and days. Sitting at his feet, none of their opinions really mattered. Jesus was pleased with me. And he stood up in my defense. So why did I do it? I guess it was, it was all I had. And days later, Jesus would pour out everything he had for us, for me. of that happening just wanted to set an example there yeah I'm not a big fan of mass myself but I have a wife that encourages me that I'm a pastor and I should be setting an example so that's great where has summer gone such a beautiful time. Where is it? Some people, maybe, maybe some of you are still hanging on to it. La last summer, approximately 2.45, we left Saskatoon 
We drove for one hour, and we went from 30 and a half degrees, got out of the truck 15 degrees. We want to hang on to summer, and it's hard to embrace fall. There's something of a metaphor here. Karen and I, in the last couple of days, the last 48 hours, we agreed together, and sometimes that's a miracle, but we agreed together that it was the best summer ever. I trust and I hope that's been your experience as well. Although my personality would always find something more that we could, we could have added. We could have added a visit to Italy. We could have added a visit to Boston. We could have spent some time in BC like some people here. That's part of summer as well, right? Jesus asked his disciples at one point, closing in, closing in on the end of his ministry as the anointed one, who do people say I am? If you were asked, and maybe you were asked this last week, I don't know, if, if you were asked, how would you respond? We've just spent two months looking at the I am's. How would you respond as you reflect back over those two months? Which ones would you hone in on? How would it change with the, the person that is asking the question? Can you remember the context of these different I am's? But more, but more significantly, how are the I am's resonating with your life experience? When the disciples were asked this question, what if they would have returned back the favor and responded, Jesus, who do you say I am? Interestingly, remember from Matthew, perhaps chapter 16, that Jesus answered without Peter even asking. And he says, you are, you are Cephas, you are Petros, you're the, the rock. After a summer of, of contemplating or taking a, a long, loving look at Jesus through the I am's, and we saw them quickly flash before us, right? I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. And we sang that incredible song. Could you hold back the tears on that one? I am. I am the gate. I am the door. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, the life. And then last week, to take that long, loving look, I am the vine. Wow. The Gospel of John is the Gospel of belief. We read in, in John chapter 20, 31, John just puts it right out there, doesn't he? The reason for him even writing this book is these things are written that you may believe. Believe. And I'll, I'll use N.T. Wright's version here. You may believe the Messiah, the Son of God, is none other than Jesus. And that in having that kind of faith, you can have life in him. John began this gospel, and it was wonderful to start, but, but I'll, I'll repeat as, well, in the beginning, in the NIV, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word became flesh, in, in verse 14, and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father has made 
him known. We've been looking at the gospel of belief and discovering what belief really is. And, and we see that belief is, is trusting. It's trusting Jesus' word and work. We're trusting Jesus for who he says he is. His very essence. We're not simply trusting for who the church or tradition or the world or even our imagination says. We're trusting what he says in all of his works as we see through or, or a selection of his works in the gospel of John but also the I am's. We're also not just taking the world's kind of view as well of this statement that we punctuate when things go wrong and we use it as a curse word. For the couple, last couple of months, one of the things that, that made the gospel or made this summer the best summer of my life is by contemplating these I am's and taking this long, loving look how revolutionary Jesus is. Especially when we realize when we're looking through a believing heart at him that we start from that place and we're not on the road towards it, but it's great for those within the room and without in your, wherever you are, wherever you're on that road of discovery, but it's how revolutionary it was for those original listeners right in the time zone that Jesus was in there of discovering, but how we can discover right now in 21st century and how incredibly relevant, how incredibly relevant believing in Jesus is, and especially in our moment of history and I'm not sure, do we realize we're in a one-off kind of thing? Through this whole COVID-19, this leveling that has happened worldwide, and that we get to worship with masks on. And if you want to be a speaker, you can take your mask off. So that's a little incentive. Or you want to join with our worshipers who are appropriately socially distanced, you can take it off. But the thought hit me in preparation and, and Pastor Dell saying, Dwayne, I'd like, you, you want to sum this series up? And I, absolutely, yes. I hope that's what I said. Is that what I said? I hope so. But what if we reread the Gospel of John with the question, who am I? Or prayerfully reading the entire gospel and saying, Jesus, who do you say I am? You may want to close your eyes. I want to I read, slowly read this prayer by Henry Nouwen in his book, following Jesus. Dear Lord, give me eyes to see and ears to hear. I know there is light in the darkness that makes everything new. I know there is new life and suffering that opens a new earth for me. I know there is a joy beyond sorrow that rejuvenates my heart. Yes, Lord, I know that you are, that you act, that you love, that you indeed are light, life, and truth. People, work, plans, projects, ideas, meetings, buildings, paintings, music, and literature can only give me real joy and peace when I see and hear them as reflections of your presence your glory, your kingdom. Let me then see and hear. 
Lord, show me your vision. Become a guide in life and impart meaning to all my concerns. Amen. There's so much. This gospel is so rich. I just want to take and put three hooks up today so that we don't have a whole mini-series this morning, but just three hooks. One hook is believing is seeing. And the next hook is being who you are is your identity and your doing flows from that. And the third hook is I'll wait till we get there. I better not give that away. Believing is seeing. Or, in, or as the prayer is, seeing and hearing. You see, Jesus was doing eight, and we see these eight signs, or some might say seven signs that Jesus did. These, these were his work and if you want to just focus on one text rather than reading the whole of the Gospel of John, I'll direct you to one text, and that is John chapter 10, verses 19 to 42. All of the sermon could be collapsed in there. You see, as we look at these works of Jesus, they detail what believing in Jesus is. Through these last eight weeks, this is the ninth one, we, we see this is incredible unfolding of who Jesus is. But John chapter 10 says, you, you may not be able to just accept my words for it. So here, I've done these works. Look at these works, if you will. And so we're starting there this morning that believing is seeing. And if we look at his works, we see who he is. See, there are six different works or signs. And we only touched on four of them. And we could spend the next months fleshing those out. There are chapters 2, 4, 5, 6, 9, and 11, or 8, Dash 9 and 11. And one that was really key that kept coming up is, remember from 8 to 9, the man who was born blind, who Jesus came along, healed him, gave him sight, and he could see. Believing is seeing, and we see in this gospel as well, as we look at chapter 8, 58, and and Jesus says, before Abraham was, I am. Remember what Jesus also said? Abraham saw me. What? A couple thousand years ago, earlier, he saw Jesus. Or Isaiah saw Jesus. Believing is seeing but just a little story to illustrate this. Back in grade 11 or, or 12, maybe at the end of the school year, Karen's brother's this like mighty fisherman to this day. And we had this brilliant idea between, between school being done and getting our report cards, we're going to hit the lake for a few days and just enjoy fishing. So we went to Pickerel Bay, and of course we caught pickerel there, our limit. And so it was time, let's go for the big ones. We're going to go for a lake trout. And we pulled out of Pickerel Bay into Hunter's Bay, and it's a huge bay. And we got between two islands, dropped anchor, and we just started fishing. And I repeated the words that have haunted me ever since. I'll believe it when I see it. When you catch something, Eric, who is now my brother-in-law, I'll start fishing. Well, Eric has a 32-pound lake trout 
hanging in his living room. And I, I have a story. <laughs> I have a story that I got to net it. You see, believing is seeing. Belief in the gospel of John, it, it's a very personal matter, isn't it? Have you not found that so? Very personal matter in that you personally need to receive. It's an individual response, but it's a very community matter, and, and sometimes we miss that in North America, in Western cults. It's a very community matter because we need the fullness of the body of Christ, those here and, and those watching as well in this moment and, and later on. We need to experience that fullness in, through the lives of others. And it's also believing is a very mysterious kind of thing, isn't it? Very mysterious. And throughout the gospel, we see different people at various times and various levels of belief. Some turned away from their belief, as we see in John 6, 66. They, they turned away when they discovered what Jesus was really calling them to do. And then we see other people that right on the spot, right? I believe. What? Instantaneous belief? What is that? And who were the hardest for Jesus to convince? And we see that in John 10 as well, right? John 10, the religious leaders. What did it take to convince them? And yet, many of them, many rulers even, came to believe as they saw the works of Jesus being filled out and along the way, his glory, his glory came alive and they're responding to it. Even the disciples were still discovering in the, those last days in the upper room, they were, they were still discovering what it meant to believe. I, I trust you find comfort from that when you bump into unbelief and trying to embrace the fullness of who Jesus is and who he was communicating for us to be and to follow him as he is. When you hit up against that, and finally, at the end of that upper room, we see they got it. They finally got it. Jesus is so patient, so patient. And we see that prayer, that prayer in, in John 17, when, when Jesus says, all the ones that you gave to me, they got it. I'm, I'm paraphrasing here. They got it. Take Jesus at his work. Take him at his work. It's a starting point. It's part of seeing. Take him, believe the I am is seeing, is seeing the glory of God. That simple prayer that we prayed, I'd like to add to that. I'd like to add to that and say, Lord, all caps, and even kneel. Say, Lord Jesus, who am I? Who am I? Being defines who you are more than doing. Perhaps one of the greatest glories of COVID-19 is this one right here. It's right here. Because in lockdown for a couple of months, we had to just be, right? We had to be a human being again, not just a human doing. Another glory of it is when my daughter, who lives in this beautiful part of the world, Verona, Italy, 
she lets us know that we're living in the best spot on earth. That's the glory of COVID, to, to change that kind of worldview, isn't it? And as we look at this, de defining our being, that's what we've done for the last eight weeks. As we saw Jesus say, I am. That's why I love, that's why I love the gospel of John. There's a complete absence. And if you'd like to discover, discuss this, I'd love to discuss it over coffee or any time, and I'd love to have a whole life group on this for weeks and weeks. There's a complete absence of moralistic faith in the Gospel of John. What do I mean by that? How many commandments in the Gospel of John? One. What is it? John 13, 34. Love one another. And he steps it up, doesn't he? Doesn't Jesus step it up from, from the, the law, the Torah? Steps it up as, as I have loved you. Without saying too much, about masks. That's what this is about. It's loving others as he has loved. You see, we're not wearing the mask for ourselves. We're wearing it for the other person. We're not protecting ourselves. We're protecting the other. But if all of us do that, we're all being protected. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? But what an illustration just of loving as Jesus loved us. Believing, believing is so incredible in the Gospel of John. It's dynamic versus static. It's continuous and building rather than a momentous single decision. It's, it's relationship. Okay? It's relationship. Didn't you? Wasn't that an incredible, incredible monologue at the beginning of Martha, of Mary, of Bethany, sharing how it was she took? It was all relationship. It's relational rather than dogmatic statements. It's living versus dead. It's, uh, the artists among us, it's creative. It's not cookie cutter. Hey? It's creative. It's transformative versus something. Rarely do we want to hear this, but in respect to cancer, benign. It's transformative rather than benign, and if benign is a wonderful word if you're trying to hear results, right? Your results, but in this sense, it's dead. That's what we want to, as far as cancer goes. Belief. That's what this gospel is saying. Just, just believe. Take Jesus at his word. Those I am statements. Being in his orbit defines you and it defines your work. And finally, is glory. This whole gospel is about glory. Glory. Right from beginning to end. Glory, glory, glory. Seven glories or eight, eight glories. And it's the glory of Jesus is to live right in you. Not be out there, but it's right in your heart, in your soul, in your mind, in your feelings, in your body, in your walking, and all of that. The glory of Jesus. Let anyone who thirsts, Jesus says in, in John 7, 37, come to me and drink. And what? And rivers of living water. Do we have that picture? Living water will flow from your, 
just when I was thinking on that, I looked outside and I saw living water on our deck. Isn't that crazy? Just at the right time, when I'm thinking about living water, I spent high school living in a house that faced a river that was rushing all year, 24-7. If you sat in the living room, you had the river flowing right at you. If you moved over a little bit, you saw the, it turn, and then you could go sit in the living room, and you could see it bend, and then you could go another part of the living room, and you could see it head away. It never stopped. It was continuous. And if you drive up to Big Stone, just hang a left just before getting to Larange, and you drive, and you can still see that house, but you, more important, you can see that river flowing. And that's what Jesus is saying. That river, his glory, is to be flowing in us and through us to the world. And if we try to keep that to ourselves, what happens becomes a cesspool. It's no longer life-giving. But if it flows in you and through you to the world, that's how powerful the work of Jesus is and the words of Jesus are. And he's saying, the very life, the life I have with the Father, that life, that very love the Father has for me, it's in you. It's in all of us. And when we allow that life, what? Through Holy Spirit to come out of us, eternal life, it affects everyone around us. One of the things that, that struck me this last week is just feeling like, where have I been for the last number of decades? I've missed it. I've shrunk wrapped Jesus, kept him to myself. Thankfully, Holy Spirit says, you know what? The same patience, the same patience Jesus had with those disciples in the upper room, he has that with each, each one of us. And he wants us to keep stepping out. And if we fall, it uh, doesn't matter how many times, he wants us to keep, st- because even our smallest acts will bear fruit because Holy Spirit is in it. He's the living flow, not, not Dwayne or not any of us here or any of us listening. It's his life flowing in us and through us. And the end of Jesus' prayer is John 17, 26. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the very love you have for me may be in them and I myself would be in them. This is radical. This is radical. That each of us in this room and each person listening, that we would embody, embody the life of Christ. That we would be very and completely transformed by faith in him. The disciples of, of Christ, or, or the disciples or Christ followers accepted Jesus for who he is into their world for what their world was. You may say, Dwayne, you, you, you don't know my world. And I would respond, you're absolutely right. I don't know your world, but I am does. He came into this flesh and this blood as I am. 
He does know your world. He's come to transform it. Can I go, can I, can I just go back to the pre-COVID-19 world? Sorry. I don't know if that's ever going to happen. We have to go forward. Right? And that's how powerful, powerful this was. That the greatest glory, the greatest glory, maybe second greatest. Sorry, we could have a discussion. Um, maybe second to the resurrection, but this is the great glory that Jesus saying, when I am lifted up, when I'm on the cross, what I will draw all, all people to myself. And he's ushering in new creation when he has risen from the dead on the first day of the week. And so I'll take from the Eastern Church, the cross is prologue to the resurrection. And he is rising up that our life and our new world is entirely different. That he is king. He is Lord of lords. And he's king of kings. And thankfully, when my head gets too wrapped up in all of that, Karen can burst my button, my balloon, and get me grounded again. Thankfully, but this is, this is what Jesus has done for us. You see, belief is having Jesus' view of the world, of the Father, of himself, of life transforming, of the quality in the here and now already, but not yet. But I think we've emphasized not yet. So much we forget that it's here. Eternal life. Eternal life that you may know him and Jesus whom he has sent. We're not simply believing in a home out there in heaven. Although that is true and our family took great solace in that because the reason we drove that hour out is to get together as a family and then we drove out again to Dalmany to bury one of Karen's aunts. And what comfort to know Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life. But I like, and I like, and I like what our, our granddaughter, I'm not sure it's five or, or the eight-year-old one, but just saying there's, there's room for everyone. There's no limits to the rooms that Jesus is creating for those who respond in faith. There's no limit at all. And then we see Martha. Hey, very similar, very similar to, to Mary, but she was probably preparing a meal while Mary was anointing Jesus' feet. Martha believed, as did Mary, in the resurrection that one day they couldn't have imagined, couldn't have imagined that he would do it for their brother. And that moment, they believed, and even those around him, they believed that had the one that opened the eyes of the blind been there, this wouldn't have happened but for Jesus to raise up. And there, there lies the transformative power to whatever has happened in my life, whatever has happened in your life, he can raise it up. He can raise you up to victory and to eternal life. That is the kind of Messiah that we are worshiping, that we are following. And I have just three short statements 
of application. One, seeing Jesus as Christ calls us to become lifelong learners of him. Lifelong. Two, that we are to stay in Jesus' orbit, to take a long, loving look at him and to allow the love of Christ for us to dwell in our minds, in our hearts. And it means that that love is what flows in all of our doing. And even when we mess it up, when it's done from a heart of love, Holy Spirit can use it. And finally, Jesus shares his glory with us as eternal life. Jesus came not to shrink wrap your life, but to give you full humanity, a true, full life. And I like, I like the, one of my favorite quotes of, of John Piper is, God is most glorified in us, in you, in each one of here, each one that's listening. God is most glorified when we're most satisfied in him. And it means that you find your true self through living in him and seeking the Father's glory even as Jesus did continually all the time. Can you join with me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we, we bow before you and we come as we are and that's really the only way that we can come. And for who we are, for all of our experiences, all of our disappointments, times of suffering, times of great joy, times of great celebration, times of sorrow, we come with all of that. And we look at you at the foot of a cross, even as John, the beloved one, did. And we look up at you, and we see your great love, your great love for us. And your prayer for us is that that kind of love that goes right to the cross and goes through that cross and takes, takes the punishment and also defeats evil and death itself for us, that that life, that life is for us. And so, I, Lord, I pray that we could respond wherever we are on that chart, that continuum. At the beginning that you say, come and you will see, and we take those first footsteps on the Gospel of John, and then we get, we get to the end and we hear, we hear your, your admonition and your restoration of Peter and we hear you say, follow me. And you say, you must follow me. Lord, we want to stay in your orbit and we want to enjoy you but we also want to move out, out from these walls and enjoy life to the full wherever you take us. Whatever that means. In our workplace, in our families, on the streets, other nations that you might call us to, other relationships, wherever. Lord, we want to, we want to see that life, those rivers of living water, not stay in us, but flow through us to the world. And we hear your words as well. As the Father sent me, so send I you. Lord, we want to be your church, sent ones, apprentices in eternal life. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
you sing with us. Yo 
Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, worship team, and uh, thank you for worshiping along with us. Thanks, Pastor Dwayne, for your words today. It's a great reminder about believing that we have an active part to play in our relationship with God and that God is pursuing us. Jesus is pursuing us, and he's, I don't know if the right word is, making it easy, but in a way he's making it easy for us because he's chasing us and giving us what we need to do that. Um, in just a moment, we're going we're gonna to close. This is Labor Day weekend, and there's lots to pray for in the workforce. Ch children are going back to school, and so we want to pray for teachers and administrators and the janitorial staff, bus drivers. Uh, so we want to be praying for them. Uh, still for frontline workers, there's elections coming up in our, our province, and there's people to pray for. All of you go to work, and so uh, pray for each other as well. Whether it's paid or unpaid, we are, work is actually something that God gave us before the fall. It's a blessing to be able to work, to have health, strength, me mental capacity. And so uh, if you're able to work, you're blessed. And we want to remember that in this great country that we live in. Um, so whether you're doing paid work or unpaid and volunteer work, God bless you, and may you pour into what you do with lots of love. And in just a minute, we're going to close in prayer with a video that is a prayer surrounding uh, Labor Day and this, this idea. When we close uh, the service, there'll be huddle questions come up on the screen. And at home, you're, willing to, you're, you're good to be able to talk about them and discuss the service. And if you would like to stay and be a part of a huddle here at church, then please do so. And just uh, spin your circles in, in uh, physically distanced ways. And we'd love to have you. And if you have to leave, God bless you as you go. So uh, may this video touch your heart. Please be praying for... Uh, for all those things that we've mentioned for the week and for what's going on here at the church as we adjust and, and look at children's and youth programming and as we uh, move towards life groups beginning at the end of September into October, we are uh, excited about what God has ahead. So thanks for uh, persevering. Uh, give yourselves a round of applause and particularly the tech team for a great test launch. to uh, Casey and Bob and Ron at the back and all their work doing this. And want a, a shout out to Alicia who can't be here today because after six months of working so hard on this, she had uh, four wisdom teeth extracted this weekend. So you can pray for her as she's recovering and uh, wishes with everything she had within her to be here for this first one. So please be praying for Alicia. God bless you. Trust this video ministers to your heart. God, the earth, the moon, the sun, the stars, the oceans, the mountains, the trees that grow beside the waters, the animals that come to the stream to drink. It's all your work. You have created it. You gave us the sun which marks the days and the moon that marks the months. It all fits together like the workings of a clock. Then you gave us the ability to care for it all. You gave us the chance to care for each other. There is so much work to do, God. Help us to remember we do the work for you. If we cook, let us cook as though your son will be a guest at the table. If we paint, let us paint as though the picture will hang in your house. If we clean, let us clean as if your angels are coming to our home to dance. We will keep you in mind, God in all things, in all we do. When we labor and when we rest, you created and you took a break. We will take this day and stop. We will breathe. We will appreciate the gifts you have given us, our hands, our feet, our minds, our hearts. We will look around and see our lives as a gift. We will be grateful for the jobs we have we will pray for those who cannot find work. We will reach out a hand to help those who cannot help themselves. We will be grateful for this day, this moment set aside to say thank you to the one who began a good work and continues that work in us. Amen. I'm drowning 
Through this broken vessel, you're the calm within the current, hope rising through the storm. You'll never leave me, it doesn't matter what I'm facing. No, when I'm facing. This mercy, you had every right to leave me. All my sin had left me stranded. stranded, but your love has brought me home. You'll never leave me, it doesn't matter what I'm facing. No, when I'm facing. Through this broken vessel, you're the calm within the current, hope rising through the storm. You'll never leave me, it doesn't matter what I'm facing. No, when I'm facing. mercy you had every right to leave me all my sin had left me stranded but your love has brought me home you'll never leave me it doesn't matter what I'm facing no when I'm failing you're holding on to me
and I'm drowning. Oceans raging all around me. Through the thunder and the waves, you're constant. You're my lifeline in the storm. See the waters rushing through this broken vessel. You're the calm within the current. Hope rising through the storm. You'll never leave me. It doesn't matter what I'm facing. No, when I'm failing, you're holding on to me. This mercy, you had every right to leave me. All my sin had left me stranded. stranded, but your love has brought me home. You never leave me, it doesn't matter what I'm facing. No, when I'm failing, you're home. This mercy, you had every right to leave me. All my sin had left me stranded, but your love has brought me home. You'll never leave me, it doesn't matter what I'm. 
and I'm drowning. Oceans raging all around me. Through the thunder and the waves, you're constant. You're my lifeline in the storm. See the waters rushing through this broken vessel. You're the calm within the current. Rising through the storm, you'll never leave me. It doesn't matter what I'm facing, no. When I'm failing, you're holding on to me, and I'm holding on to. This mercy, you had every right to leave me. All my sin and left me stranded. But your love has brought me home. You'll never leave me. It doesn't matter what I'm facing. No, when I'm facing. This mercy, you had every right to leave me. All my sin and left me stranded. But your love has brought me home. You'll never leave me. It doesn't matter what I'm facing. No, when I'm facing.
don't ever leave me It doesn't matter what I'm facing No When I'm failing You're holding on to me And I'm holding on to you I'm drowning Oceans raging all around me Through the thunder and the waves You're constant You're my lifeline in the storm See the waters Rushing through this broken vessel You're the calm within the current Rising through the storm You'll never leave me It doesn't matter what I'm facing No When I'm failing You're holding on to me mercy you had every right to leave me all my sin and left me stranded but your love has brought me home you'll never leave me it doesn't matter what I'm facing no when I'm failing you're holding on to you.